looking to build a new gaming PC, the case is one of the most important bits to get right. Not only does it determine the overall look of your gaming PC build, but it also determines the size, the type of components you'll be able to install inside. But unlike selecting a new CPU or GPU, you can't simply look at a performance graph and pick the best performing option in your budget, as cases are so unique and different. And there are also literally hundreds, if not thousands to choose from. So we've reviewed the best, gathered them up for today's video, and I'll be walking you through the best cases for all budgets, form factors, and aesthetics. Let's do this. The Corsair HS80 Max is a wireless gaming headset that packs a punch. With precisely tuned 50mm neodymium drivers, Dolby Atmos support, and wireless connectivity over Bluetooth and 2.4GHz, it has you covered. Use it with a PC, Mac, PS4, or PS5, and enjoy up to 65 hours of battery life wirelessly, and 130 hours on Bluetooth in the process. Need a top up? 15 minutes of charge bags you up to six hours of use. Check it out at the first links in the description below. Personally speaking, the case is one of my favorite parts in any build, second only to the GPU. I always want a chassis that shows off my hardware, has good cooling, and stays nice and quiet while I'm gaming. And it's for those reasons that I'm quite excited for this video. I'm gonna walk through from the cheapest to the most expensive cases with options for everyone. We've looked at over a hundred cases in the last couple of years, so you can really trust that these are some of the best options on the market. And let's start, shall we, with the cheapest case of all. The Montec Air 903 Max is a case that has blown me away this year. Quite literally, it's got four 140mm fans included. And at the time of making this video, it comes in at under $80. It's an extraordinary budget chassis that ticks a lot of boxes. The front panel is very easily removable. In quite an innovative fashion, you haven't got to take off the remainder of the plastic, allowing access to the three included 140mm ARGB fans. The case supports E80X motherboards, long GPUs, and decent sized air coolers too. While the large and untinted tempered glass side panel allows for an unobstructed view into the build itself. One of the reasons I love this case so much for budget builders is because you get loads of airflow, helping with cooling on those often cheaper parts that you'll be installing inside, and you haven't got to pay extra for fans after the fact. This is a pretty flawless chassis, and for the price, I'm not quite sure how Montec have done it. But they aren't the only ones recently who have competed really well in the budget space. I've also got to give a big shout out to Deepcool, and specifically their CH560, another of my favorite entry-level chassis. At the time of making this video, this comes in around $10 more, and I do feel like you get a little bit more for your money. Included on the front again are three fans, only the 120, not the, the front panel's more stubborn, not the 140 mil variety, but 120, and they are ARGB. Build quality is pretty exceptional, and you get this pretty cool innovative mesh system here at the bottom of the tempered glass side panel. It won't be for everybody, and some people might might find this design to be a little weird, but it of course allows for extra passive airflow for the GPU and gives everything that little bit more breathing room. Moving around to the back of the chassis and all of the side panels come with captive thumb screws. That means you can unscrew them without the screws themselves falling off. And you'll find great inbuilt cable management options, pre-run RGB daisy chaining for the fans at the front and the little included hub or controller. I also want to point out one really cool feature on this case, apart from the totally tallest magnetic side panel, which is the built-in integrated GPU support bracket. It's a little flimsy, but it does the job and certainly helps to prevent GPU sag on pretty much all of the latest large 40 series and RX 7000 series GPUs. But again, at the sort of sub $100 price point, there are plenty of great options. And my final more budget oriented pick would have to be the NZXT H5 Flow and the H5 series in general. NZXT had a slow year in 2022, but they definitely didn't let that stop them in 2023 with a plethora of of fantastic case options that hit the market. The H5 and H9 are particular highlights for me, but their recent H6 release was also kind of innovative and pretty cool. The Flow has a mesh panel at the front, but you don't get the included fans that you'll see at the front of this system. You'd have to notch up to the Elite, which has a front glass panel for more included fans. That's the downside of a brand like Ender XT, who are undoubtedly a little bit more expensive than a Deepcool or a Montec. Inside the case, one thing that's really cool is the dedicated GPU fan. Situated just down here, there's a dedicated duct with a 120mm fan that pushes air up and directly into the GPU, which you'd of course install about here. This is amazing because it focuses on GPU temperatures in a way we've not seen before. And while the case has weaker radiator mounting support than other options at this price point, it's very compact. The build quality is absolutely phenomenal. And of course, if we switch around to the back, you'll find captive thumb screws again to retain the rear panel with some really great inbuilt cable management options. You'll see the dedicated GPU fan duct at the bottom, really clever design, simply never
never seen anything like that quite before. There's no doubt in that at this price point there are some amazing options, but you can get a bit more innovative if you step up and spend just that little bit more money. A great example of that is the next recommendation in this video, the Thermaltake The Tower 200. Now this is actually one of our editor's picks, and you can find a full write-up of all the cases with live pricing and availability linked at the first link down below. Now the Thermaltake The Tower 200 is kind of cool, because it sort of reimagines what a case can be. The motherboard mounts on the rear tray, like in a normal case, but the GPU actually sits sort of vertically down the side of the case. This prevents GPU sag, gives the graphics card dedicated airflow from the nice copious number of mesh panels, and embraces a chimney style airflow design where you pull air in from the bottom and exhaust it out the top. Cool additional upgrades, which can be fairly affordably purchased, include this little screen, which slots into any of the Tower 200 cases. There you can display key info like CPU and GPU temperatures, while the case is also compact, well built and available in a wide variety of colours. Of all of Thermaltake's cases this year, this has got to be one of my favourites and reviewed very well. You can actually find full detailed written reviews for pretty much everything mentioned in today's video, linked down below. At number 5 in this video is the Fractal North. Now, what is there to say about this case that hasn't already been said? Fractal Design have taken Scandinavian design to the max and designed something sleek, cool and truly like nothing else. From a gold integrated I.O. with USB-A and the USB to a wood effect front panel that combines the best of aesthetics and mesh. The case is built so well, the build quality is absolutely immaculate. And if you want something more restrained that doesn't shout, I'm a gamer and I play Fortnite, yeah baby, then this is the case to go for. Not going to be to everybody's taste, but I like that they've done something different. And there's a reason that when this case first launched, it was sold out for literally months. It took us ages to get one in and I can absolutely see why. At number six on our list is one of the latest chassis from Lee and Lee, the O11. Vision. Now, as you can see, kind of hard to keep clean, and as such, I don't really want to touch it and make it worse. There is so much glass in this case, it's unreal. In fact, Lee and Lee, the original fish tank case designers, have actually taken things a step further and removed the pillar that you find on the front of pretty much all fish tank inspired PC cases. Whether you're looking for great radiator support, good airflow, or most of all, a case that shows your build off, there is nothing like it. Lee and Lee's build quality is always immaculate. Their price to perform performance is pretty good too. And while airflow in this case is never going to be as good, this is as good as you're going to get if you want something with so much glass. Be careful building in it, it is a bit of a challenge compared to other options, but a challenge that certainly reaps worthy results and a build that will look awesome at the end of it. Coming in at the seventh most expensive case in the lineup is the MSI Gunyear 300R. It's another chassis that reviewed really well. And I know what you're probably thinking, James, MSI PC case? Yes. Whether it's the copious amount of included mesh on the case, or the four included 120mm fans that set you up well for airflow, there's lots to love here. The included GPU support bracket that feels substantial if a little over the top is also a nice addition to see. While additional features, like the ability to rotate the PCI slots for vertical GPU installations, are amazing to see. Build quality is fantastic, both the black and the white versions of the case look amazing, really not a case that I can particularly fault. If we move around to the back of the chassis, I like the inclusion of some mesh on the rear panel, while the ability to remove the panel with just one screw, which is again captive, and feels very, very solid. There's literally no flex at all. Shows off a rear panel that includes a great integrated fan and RGB hub, awesome code management, and this attention to detail, which I've not seen in an MSI case before, with these white cables that match the white chassis color. MSI have gone all out on this case when it comes to attention to detail, drive mounting, features, really pretty faultless for around $150. Coming in at number eight, and if you want to spend just a bit more money still, check out this, the Be Quiet Shadow Base 800 FX. Now Be Quiet are a brand that we've used previously a little bit, but this year we've seen so many more new cases from them and been repeatedly quite impressed. Obviously Be Quiet is all in the name, it's about quiet operation and a system that performs very well audibly, and that's no more apparent in this case than when you take off the back panel. Look at all that sound deadening foam. Be Quiet's build quality is second to none, and the attention to detail in so many of their cases is, is phenomenal. Take a look as well at the size of this included ARGB and fan hub. It's amazing to see. They are on the larger side, often some of their cases, and certainly won't be for everybody. The more restrained aesthetic doesn't always match my taste, but a chassis like this with its dual ARGB light bars at the front really adds a nice aesthetic touch, keeping a front panel that looks the part and performs well when it comes to airflow. Their cases are really easy to build in. In fact, some of the easiest cases to build in that we've used, and the fans that you often find included from their Silent Wings range are some of the quietest case fans on the
the market. Often, case brands will include some of the cheapest and nastiest fans known to man, not be quiet. Again, you can read our full review of the 800FX linked in the description below. Love this chassis, easy to build in, and loads of hardware support for the biggest GPUs, biggest motherboards, and chunkiest air and liquid coolers. Coming in at number nine in some of our larger cases yet, it's a chassis from Height. Now, this is their new Y70 Touch. I'm gonna recommend the Y60, but the reason it can't be here today is because it's at my house, in my personal gaming setup. And on the GeekerWatt channel, there can be no greater commendation of a chassis than that. Great airflow with this fish tank aesthetic that looks so good. It's also not too big, despite the fact it's got decent hardware support, and the vertical GPU mount that's as standard, you have no horizontal GPU mounting option, looks amazing. Airflow and cooling is good, or at least as good as it probably can be given the amount of glass, and this new Y70 Touch version, which is bigger and has a 4 K touchscreen is worth an honorable mention. I think the Y60 is the far better value proposition, but the Y70 Touch is certainly worth considering. I think the Y60 is one of the most popular cases of the last 12 months, and I can absolutely see why. It's their best case in the lineup by a mile, in my opinion, with attention to detail that rivals everything and anything on the market. Now, we'll admit, we're getting to the point of the video where all the cases left are very large. And although they're all here, you can see what I mean, I don't want to pick them up, because I might break my back. So let's get a bit creative as I recommend the final case on this list. Cooler Master's Half 700 Evo. Cooler Master had to make an appearance in this video, of course they did, and the Half 700 Evo remains my favourite absolutely massive case. A screen on the front, loads of addressable RGB kind of perspex or glass panes, great airflow, unbelievable radiator mounting support. If you've got a lot of money and loads of really big hardware, we're talking the biggest 4090 you can buy, the Half 700 Evo has to be the case for you. I really like it. There's nothing out there that quite rivals it. And yes, it's a little bit on the garish side, but personally, if you want a build that you literally can't miss, it doesn't get much better than the Half 700 Evo. But before we wrap up, there is one more case left to go, and it's not bigger than the Half 700 Evo, quite the opposite. It's my honorable mention for those of you in the market for a great mini ITX case, and I can lift this one up. It is, of course, the Corsair 2000D Airflow. I couldn't leave you mini ITX case lovers out the equation with a chassis like this that is actually be really impressive. Unlike lots of Corsair cases, there's no glass or really fancy RGB in sight. It's just a case comprised of loads of mesh panels for great cooling and great compatibility when it comes to large components. The radiator and motherboard go on one side while the top panel removes and everything else follows for installation that's basically as easy as can be. There's plenty of room for the GPU with this whole section dedicated to even the longest next gen cards, while airflow in this case is as good as it can be for a tiny form factor system. I mean, just Look at the frame of this case next to the Y70 Touch. Isn't it so cute? Mini ITX cases are always an area where you have to make a bit of compromise. And this chassis isn't perfect. Cape management is a nightmare. But if you want a case that maximizes compatibility, it's fairly easy to build in in a mini ITX form factor and supports long GPUs with a 360mm RAD, the 2000D from Corsair might just be the case for you. I've now got to spend a lot of time putting panels back on cases. What do you guys think of these recommendations? Let me know and I'll link everything with latest pricing and availability down in the description below. Thanks for watching, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.